I'm Eric. And I'm Jamie. And this is Horoscope, a podcast for people who love horror movies. And people who want to love them. It's me, Eric, the only person who doesn't rewatch anything. One and really? done. Sometimes. Except for this podcast. Except for, for this podcast. <laughs> You're not a movie rewatcher? Not really. It takes I like watch a movie and then I wait for a while until I forget it and then I watch it again. Which is actually not great for this podcast because we're today we're talking about <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. Ooh, and I wait, was, I have a bit. You oh. always have a bit. Hello, Eric. Oh. <laughs> Oh Sorry, my gosh, guys. So today we're doing a podcast with Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> um, the Hannibal the Cannibal. The, the stupid. Psychologist. Yeah, it's it really, so stupid. They really kind of got away with that, didn't they? <laughs> they really just changed one letter. I want answers. It's so, it's like, my name is Burderer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> like, stupid. Oh, that's Dale Biller. <laughs> Who's that? Killer. Oh, oh it worked. <laughs> Um, it's Silence of the Lambs time. It's Silence of the Lambs. Remind me why I picked this movie. Why? Because you love Hannibal. That's true. It was that th- is solely true. that reason. You love the show Hannibal by yeah. Brian Fuller? Is that correct? Yes. Great, great creator. Done plenty of good shows. All get canceled. They might make season four of Hannibal. I'm losing my shit. I did. Netflix might pick in, it up. In research for this, there was like rumors and stuff. Because they were talking about like yes. introducing yes. Clarice into yes. it and whatnot. Yes. Really? Yes. Yes. Well, because, okay, do you know the timeline? No. Okay. Here's Let me tell you what I know about Silence of the Lambs. Yes. Okay. The movie Silence of the Lambs. Yes. So, my bit I <laughs> did earlier. Perfect. Hello, Clarice. Still spot um, Can you it, do the fava beans line? No, I, I don't know what that sounds like. I've never heard him say that. Okay. Um, I know well, the mask. We'll wait till after. Guess what, folks? There isn't really a theme song for us to like audio like hurt your ears with. Uh, <laughs> but there but, is but, me <laughs> pretending to be Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> I want you to also be Buffalo Bill. Which, oh, boy. He has a okay. wild voice. Just okay. I can't wait. Okay. So Jodie Foster is in this. This yes. is her first grown up movie, right? Um, Not necessarily. Okay. She, I mean, like she was a child actor and then kind of transitioned into doing more adult roles. Yeah. Uh, but this, and then all, she also directed a lot. Um, Sick. so this was kind of like her big, she was directing at this time, trying to become a, like, be, this is her, like, hot shit role. Like, mm-hmm. she is, like, a big deal. Oh, yeah. Okay. Jodie Foster, Anthony Hopkins, um, he is Hannibal the Cannibal. He's in prison, and they are consulting with him to catch another murderer named Buffalo Bill, who is very problematic, um... And then it ends with him saying, I ate him with some fava beans. <laughs> That's the end of the movie, right? I love that. I love that. I love, I'm not going to say anything, but I do love that. No, he like, had a good friend for dinner. It was... that's, that's the bit. <laughs> and they, I was watching Hannibal and he did that. And I was like, he said the thing, roll credits. He said it. <laughs> and that's when they canceled the show because they're like, <laughs> he fucking did it. Um, you yeah, know how, know you know how much it. egg on your face you have to have after, like, <laughs> hanging out with Hannibal for so long, and then afterwards you find and out he's, he's like, a cannibal? Fuck! Of course that's what he meant, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, so I have watched, I watched Hannibal in high school because of Tumblr. So edgy. Um, I don't know, that was before I peak mentally ill, Jamie, so I think I was better than I am now, so I handled it fine, but rewatching, I just started rewatching it in preparation for this episode, for which is an excuse, because I just wanted to watch it again. <laughs> um, it's not that bad, right. and I don't know if it's because we've been doing this podcast, or, I don't, it's, it's so surreal, I'm like, that's not a person. Right. You know? I don't know. No, I get it, because, like, in Hannibal, yeah. it's, like, art pieces almost, when, with, like, the kills, right? Yeah, I don't love it. I don't love it. The thing's... That show is wild because it'll, like, zoom in on dirt, plants growing through the soil, you know what I mean, with, like, roots moving up, or it'll, like, zoom in on tea, like, tea leaves, and I'm, like, disgusting. I'm, like, Hmm. what is that? And then, and then the murder happens, I'm, like, I don't know about the murder. That dirt Uh was so much grosser. Is Will in this movie? No. Is Will Graham in this movie? Okay. Do you... I could get into this. I don't know. I want to know all about this Marvel Cinematic Universe ass (laughs) series. (laughs) (laughs) Where Hannibal joins up with Hiller... And herderer and <laughs> hurdler. <laughs> it's hobber. 
<laughs> doesn't I also know that doesn't Clarice hook up with Hannibal later? Aren't they like lovers? Um, like later shit. in the series, they are. I think yes. Why yeah. is everyone so horny for this creepy cannibal man? I think That's that was literally the right. The writer was responding to people thinking that they were going to have a relationship, oh. so then he like wrote it in response to that, and then it was. Don't bad. do that. Don't respond to your. Yeah, and I think audiences demands. I know that. I think That's how we get the the supernatural thing that just happened. Oh, in Jamie. the most crazy week of our lives. <laughs> right. Last week. You want to break that down on this podcast? <laughs> No, I don't. I don't watch Supernatural. Yeah, it's Destiel. Destiel. That's Is that the their ship, ship name. name? That's yes, a terrible that's, ship name. It's Dean and Castiel. Okay. Yes, Castiel the angel finally confessed his love, but the actor who plays Dean is homophobic, so he was just making this like crazy face the whole time, and then he got sent to super hell. Did they make him kiss? No, they didn't even kiss. That's fucked up. But everyone's thinking he's going to die and be reincarnated as a woman so then they can have their sweet hetero love. That is wild that that show has gone on for so long and they don't understand their audience. And they finally, it like, <laughs> I've seen <laughs> a reaction to it. It's the it's the meme from Glee and it's like, I am going to make a gay love confection that is so homophobic. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> yeah. So I think responding to your, it's their final attempt before the show gets canceled. They're like, you want some of this? They're like throwing peanuts at the... The fact that it's still on, I am it's shocked. It's insane. Because I, I, didn't know I that. watched like the first few seasons and it's become yeah. a completely different show. Because it used to be like a like a spooky ghost of the week. Mm-hmm. And now it's, I don't know what it is. I don't is. know what the fuck it is. And, and they're talking about making season five of BBC Sherlock. Uh-huh. That got announced this week. And I'm uh, like, okay. It's, it's getting, the resurgence of the Super Who Locks. that, <laughs> the smugness of Hannibal, at least Hannibal is canon and like... In the show, at least. At least they they triumphed. I would argue also that Hannibal, compared to those other shows, is much better. I would also argue that. I yeah. would argue that as well. That shows, yeah, that shows really fucking It good. feels like there's a voice, a personality, a direction. Even if it's insufferable, they're so annoying. <laughs> the way that they... <laughs> The way that they talk, I'm like, I hate you, bitches. I hate you. Mm-hmm. Like, Will walks onto a crime scene and he's like, this is a five stanza poem. And then just like disassociates and then he like starts sweating oh and they're all God. like, this is good. Let him do his thing. I'm like, this man is is not well. Have you tried to watch American Gods? Uh-uh. Okay. No, that's, same thing. That's his new show. And yeah, well, it's like that, but like yeah. he has actual gods. So imagine what they say. Jesus. I haven't watched any Brian Fuller besides this. Oh, okay. Besides Hannibal. I know I should watch Pushing Daisies. Yeah. So welcome to our Hannibal podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every, since everyone has regressed to like 2013, 2014 right now in the last week, um, I think that it's appropriate we watch this somehow. Mm-hmm. That ended up being serendipitous. We're regressing back to the 90s. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, it's also, this is a great movie for the fall season. This That's movie right. is like very folly in a lot of ways. It's very yeah. like kind of cold and Someone wintery. on Reddit said this is their comfort movie. I get it. Okay. It's like, it's an autumn movie. And also great for Thanksgiving because, uh, you know, eating people. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> what you guys don't know is that we've had to postpone this episode like three days because I've had food poisoning for three days. So yeah, this is I mean, a wild time. Yeah. Yeah. This will cure you. As I as I texted you, yes. <laughs> science will cure you of your food poisoning. We, yeah. Should I read the wiki? Let's read the wiki. Okay. <laughs> the Silence of the Lambs is a 1991 American psychological horror film directed by Jonathan Demi. Demi? Mm-hmm. Jonathan Demi and written by Ted Talley, adapted from Thomas Harris's 1988 novel. That was a quick turnaround. Mm-hmm. Like, we gotta make this a movie. It stars Jodie Foster as Clarice Starling, a young FBI trainee who is hunting a serial killer. Buffalo Bill, played by Ted Levine, who skins his female victims. To catch him, she seeks the advice of the imprisoned Dr. Hannibal Lecter, Anthony Hopkins, a brilliant psychiatrist and cannibalistic serial killer. Scott Glenn and Anthony Held also feature. The film was the second Harris film adaptation to feature Lecter, preceded by Manhunter. Oh, in 1986. Have you seen that movie? Yeah. Is it good? Yeah, it's a Michael Mann movie. It's very, like, 80s. It's, like, stylized. (laughs) It has, like, a good synth. It has, like, an incredible score. Yes! What? And it's good. It's moody. It's kind of boring. Brian Cox. That sounds I don't like know the 80s. You know oh. <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> Brian Cox plays Hannibal. I don't think he's as iconic as, you know, the, the preceding Hannibal Lecter. Oh, so it's not... Oh, it's the second... Wait. Adaptation. Oh. Uh... So Manhunt... Okay, so here we go. We'll break it down. So the yes, novels... Yes, please. Uh, Science of the Lambs is the second novel. Okay. The first novel is called Red Dragon. That's right. And that stars... Or features the main characters will. 
Will okay. Graham. And, th- and pretty much it starts off with Will capturing Hannibal. Okay. He goes into jail, and then there's a new killer called the Tooth Fairy Murderer. That's over. right. Okay, that is in Hannibal. That's that is in, in that... season three. Oh, shit. Yeah, is Mason okay. Verger in that? Mason Verger. In Red Dragon? Is, is that bad a character? Guy? Bad I... guy. Okay. Maybe. Is that the Tooth Fairy Killer? No, it's another guy who sucks. I don't understand why he's in it. I okay. really hated him in season two of Hannibal. I've seen From Because I've seen, I've seen Manhunter. I have not seen... They did adapt it again and called it just Red Dragon with Anthony Hopkins. That's right. Okay. That's what I'm looking at right here. Yeah. So prequels are Red Dragon and Hannibal Rising. <laughs> the Hannibal Rising is such a fun... Is that the name of the book? Yeah. That's such a bad name. That's when the... Because there's also Hannibal. Yeah. So it goes Red Dragon. Okay. Silence of the Lambs. Hannibal, Hannibal Rising. <laughs> <laughs> Return of Hannibal. Return of Hannibal. Hannibal's back. <laughs> Hannibal's back, baby. <laughs> Having a good friend for dinner. Hannibal. The Hannibal story. <laughs> To okay. Hannibal. <laughs> so, okay, so then I think NBC Hannibal is based on It's the, like before. The books. It's before yeah. Red Dragon. Before Red Dragon. So okay, it's like a sense. pre-prequel. But they do Hannibal. catch Hannibal in season three of NBC Hannibal. And I think that's when they start catching up and Aha! start getting Red Dragon. Okay. So that's why it makes sense because in Science of the Lamb book, it's no longer Will, it's Clarice. Aha. And so that's probably why they were talking about introducing her to the show because eventually they would catch up to the point where they're at. That makes sense. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. It's a weird universe. Wild. Cinematic Cannibal Universe. Wild. The HCU <laughs> figured out. Uh, Will does not appear in this movie. Okay. He is in the book and they kind of wrote him out of it. Got it. So it's they pretty much made, focused it on Clarice and made it her story. They also rewrote some of the elements from the book to make it more focused and made it more like personal. I think they have like her being in like a more of a romantic relationship with like one of her co-workers or something like that and they kind of removed that from this movie. Good. This movie is interesting, and I am going to let you pretty much talk most of it afterwards because it is a movie that is trying to portray like a female experience, hmm. although it is written, and adapted, written, and directed by a man. That feels challenging um, <laughs> to me. But that, so I, I, I don't want to be then also a viewer who then also... <laughs> One, then more of yeah. <laughs> One more man. One more man. So this movie was a quick turnaround because pretty much they bought the rights to the book as before it was even published. Uh, do you know who Gene Hackman is? Sounds very familiar. He's like a big actor. He was okay. in, what would you know, Royal Ten Bombs. He was... Does he have a little mustache? Yeah, he has a mustache. Okay, then there I know. Go. Mustache like... Man. He was supposed to make this movie, but then he kind of dropped out. And that's when Jonathan Demme came in. He's like a weird director because like he's a kind of like a big name, I guess, but hasn't done anything that notable. The yeah. only thing that... Besides this? This, and then he also made... Um, uh, Stop Making Sense, The Talking Heads. Oh, shit! I yeah. love this guy! I already <laughs> love him! What? Uh, yeah, so he, he's done, like, he what is it called? Married to the Mob or whatever? So he's done oh. other movies Okay. that all, like, don't really add up. He also did <laughs> Philadelphia. I don't know if you know that movie. It's the... Tom yes! Hanks. Okay. I was thinking about that movie the other day. I watched oh, it in wow. law class in high school. That movie's actually a direct response to this movie. Oh, like I'm not homophobic. Look, I'm it, not it, problematic. Is that I it? don't want to. I don't want to talk about that topic until after we watch the movie. Got it. Because I want to get your take on it. That's because... a good ass movie, though. I'll say that. Have you seen the movie? No, I haven't. Antonio Banderas is Tom Hanks's lover. What? Yes. Okay. And Denzel Washington is the homophobic like lawyer who then is like just kidding. Okay. G- gays are people too. Wow. It's so sad. It's kind of. It's kind of like. <laughs> I mean, like we'll get into it afterwards. Yeah. That's so a we'll... wild body of work. Yeah, I think it's because they don't have, like, it seems like what they do is they they adapt their directing style to the body of work. Okay. And so they don't have, like, a unique I kinda stamp. I kind of like that. It's kind of like the anti, like, Guillermo, so this is good, like, a counterpart. Guillermo, they were doing the Crimson Peak after this episode. No. But, like, just, like, there's those directors who have, like, there's, yeah. like, the very visual directors, so you point them out, and then you kind of start to learn, like, the cinematic language, like a Scorsese or something like that, and so yeah. you start to understand their movies. And then there's directors like Denny, who's just, like, doing stuff and there's no like real i kind of like how i like that pragmatism a little bit what he's just like we'll get the movie done yeah and we'll make it a good movie yeah can you notice it <laughs> <laughs> this one this movie is like that's one thing too that i don't want to really like retread too too much because this movie's talked about so much because it was such a big deal at the time that's right um yeah it's like it, i didn't it just it just was listed as one of the best movies of all time a few years ago. Yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about before or after the movie, but like... I don't know. The accolades are... Ooh, maybe? <laughs> what if I hate it? And yeah. then I'm like, fuck this 
movie. And, and then like, I'm like, but the audience has <laughs> yeah. loved it. What do you want? Yeah. What do you want to tell me about it? Uh, so, okay. We got Jodie Foster in it. Yes. Child actor. We already covered that. Perfect. It was going to be originally Michelle Pfeiffer. And Jodie Foster immediately was like, I want to do this film. And like really like campaigned for it. Mm. And eventually got on board and got it. Um, Jodie Foster. What a also interesting like actress. I don't know a lot about her. Yeah, I kind of know she's in this, and that's it. And that's that's the thing. She's done so much, but I mean, like, because she was in. So there's also like the whole like Reagan assassination attempt because of her. Do you know about that? What? Yeah. So no. Wait, did she get kidnapped? No. Okay, wrong person. I'm thinking of someone else. Okay, tell me, tell me. She was in Taxi Driver. Do you know that movie? Yes. Okay. With Robert De Niro. Yes. Okay. Mm. We're back on track. I know. Pre Joker. <laughs> I know one thing culturally. There we go. We got it. <laughs> She is in that as a child actor. Okay. This guy watched that movie, became obsessed with that movie, became obsessed with her, which is all around just terrible. Yeah. And then took it upon himself to be like, okay, I'm going to impress Jodie Foster by trying to murder the president. Whoa. And so she, How old was she? Like a In kid. the movie, she was like 15. Oh, no. Uh, I don't know how long after. The, I don't know the details too much on this, but yeah. yeah. So the, he did not kill Reagan, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, <laughs> you can say it, say it, don't be shy. Unfortunately. <laughs> Isn't she, she's gay too, right? Yeah, so right. she, all, that, that's like been like a weird history too where I guess she didn't like fully come out for a while, but then eventually did. Who can blame her? Until like recently, I think. Yeah. Because like, there was kind of like one of those things that everyone kind of just knew. Yeah. But nobody like really spoke about it. Ellen Page. Yes, yeah, no, <laughs> another short... <laughs> Another short woman who has acted and directed. I don't know why that. This is. I think because I think of Ellen Page and everything. Literally, your metric is short people. <laughs> you said that in another episode. I was Did like, I? are they the same? And you're like, oh, it was James Wan. I was like, oh, is his wife on the same set again? Like, oh, they're both short. <laughs> <laughs> Eric says only tall people have rights. <laughs> <laughs> you must be this tall to have your rights. Oh no. <laughs> Okay, that's I did not know that. That is wild. Yeah, so there's a little catch up on there. Jesus. Um, and then uh, Demi approached Sean Connery, R.I.P. Recently passed away. Yeah, to damn. be Hannibal, and he said mm. no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't want to be Hannibal. <laughs> Shannibal. <laughs> okay, so when did when did Anthony Hopkins come into it? Uh, all I know is Anthony Hopkins is in this. I know he's been in a bunch of other stuff, but he for... also also a weird career where he like he like acted for a bit. And then, like, nothing really caught on, so he's just kind of, like, doing stuff. And then, like, later in his career, he got this role and fucking just, like, knocked out of the park. Yeah. Or people said so. We'll just, we'll say that after we watch Ooh. it. Uh, and so then after that, then he just got, like, another pickup, and then he, like, reprised roles. Hannibal is iconic. He got a bunch of other, like, period piece roles, because now he's just, like, this old, old... Yeah. I, I think he's... I don't think he's British, actually. I think he might be... Australian. God Australian. damn it! No! Fuck! Oh, no, he's British. Never mind. Whoops. Damn it. He's from Wales. Yeah, there we go. That's w- Welsh. He's British. Yeah, British-American. Welsh. Um, he's a sir. Ooh, yeah, Sir Anthony Did Hopkins. he get knighted after this? Um, maybe. I also knew that he was in, in Madame Butterfly. I don't know what that or is. Or M. Butterfly. So Madame Butterfly is an opera, and M. Butterfly was an adaptation, I guess, but he was on West End. Oh, he was King Lear, too. Okay. Okay. It makes sense that he's like a theater guy. Yeah. <laughs> All British people. <laughs> that yeah. was, I'll make that assumption. <laughs> uh, he kind of, I feel like he kind of reminds me of William Defoe a little bit. Am I just making that up? That association up? Are you? I feel like they have similar energy. Hmm. I can see from like an outside point of view. Yeah, I get okay. that. Okay, well let's get but I like inside. I, I, I... Inside Anthony Hopkins. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there is one way to do that. And that's by getting eaten by him. <laughs> uh, this movie took five months to shoot. <laughs> Seems like a long time. Mm. Is that a long time? You're looking at me very expectantly. I just because I said it before you asked. (laughs) I finally (laughs) got you. You know what? That's fair. That seems. I don't know. Is that long or short? I think that's like that's a good standard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some are. You know, it it really does vary. I think with a movie like this on like a bigger production, multiple like locations, that makes sense. Kind of move around. Yeah. Because this was shot in Pittsburgh, uh, but also like Pennsylvania, Northwest Virginia. So I guess that kind of encapsulates those. Or anything, what, what do you want to know before we go into this movie? I guess Aftermath is good later. Everyone thinks this is a good movie. Director doesn't sound problematic. Cast sounds fine. Sounds fine. Let's do it. All right. Let's fucking do it. Is is 
the is Buffalo Bill as shown in the movie written into the book? That's a good question. Um, because when I when I looked it up, it seemed like it was pretty much like the the I was looking up like you know it's like yeah comparisons. They said it's pretty much the same. Okay. So I didn't really dive into it too much to really pick it apart. Yeah. Because I kind of wanted to take the movie on its own. Well, I was just going to say, unless unless it doesn't sound like Demi would be like, let's just spitball a cool bad guy and then yeah. come up with this horror I show. Rain skin. Hey. <laughs> Which yeah. we'll talk about later, but that's definitely, I think that like men who dress up like women in horror movies is kind of, was a, is like a trope. Trope. Yeah. Uh, it started all the way back with uh, Psycho. Yeah. And a lot of that is also tied to Ed Gein. Who is the yeah. killer who wore what? So that's, I think, what it was trying to do. And we'll get into afterwards of, like, what that... Like, just because you're basing it off of something, like, doesn't mean that that's where, like, the conversation ends. That makes... Yep. Like, there, you gotta be... Well you gotta said. Have, like, a little bit more awareness. But, it, uh, yeah. So. I mean, it was also in the 90s, so... Which, yeah. Which was wild. A real shit show. Wild, yeah. You, yeah. You know what? Let's just see for ourselves. The one thing that I never realized, like, I just didn't, like, put it together until I watched that, um documentary about uh the actor from uh, nightmare on elm street 2 mm-hmm. where he's like things were like opening up like people were like you know there's like the free love and all that stuff like that yeah. and then like the, like because i saw it too like in like early 70s movies there's a little bit more of like a openness and discussing like like gay people and stuff like that but then all of a sudden like the aids crisis hit and everyone had to go back in the, clo- the closet sucks and like so it's like we regressed so rapidly after yeah. that and so i think like the 90s are like kind of like the pinnacle of yeah. And then we haven't recovered really since then. I mean, yeah. like, it's so crazy to me that, like, gay marriage was, like, in our lifetime. Yeah, I I remember being, like, <laughs> tragic. The first time I saw anything gay at all, uh, in media at all, was Glee in middle school. Mm-hmm. That was, like, such a big deal. It was right. such a big deal. I was like, oh, my God. Like, that was huge. So, <laughs> that's wild. So, thank God... Like, young people now have better representation, if nothing else. <laughs> if no guarantee of their human rights, at least they have, like, more examples of, you know... Yeah. Like, more positive... Yeah. Media's come actually, like, a really, really long way when it comes to that, thank God. Some aspects, yeah. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Star Wars can still only have their gay characters kiss in the background. <laughs> <sighs> Jesus. It's okay. Oscar Isaac took it into his own hands. I was like, That's I'm going to long for him. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to see me yearn. <laughs> and you can't take that away from me. Yes. And then Mark Hamill can still tweet whatever the fuck he wants. That's true. Did you see there's a cut of him and um, Harrison Ford kissing? What? Return of the Jedi? I love that. They're like, if Biden wins, we'll release the, the Han Luke kiss cut. And then he t- retweeted it with, like, thumbs up. And I was like, wait a second! What could have been? He won! <laughs> <laughs> Show us the footage! Yeah. The yeah. Coward. Anyway, okay, I think we're ready. Hey y'all, here are the content warnings for The Silence of the Lambs. So this movie features insects, animal injury, brief moments of gore. Um, We do see a finished human skin suit for one second. Then, of course, we have sexism, fat phobia, and a big old warning for transphobia. Our discussion is, as usual, as nuanced and non-gratuitous as we can make it. Check out the show notes for some more resources that we mentioned in our discussion. This week, we're so excited to share a new sponsor with you all. Hauntwares is an independent brand for fans of horror, goth, and punk featuring creepy clothes, home goods, and more at hauntwares.com. That's H-A-U-N-T-W-A-R-E-S.com. Use the code HORRORSCOPE for 10% off your purchase for the month of November. Thanks, Hauntwares. It's everybody's job to make the world a little less horrific however we can, so this week we wanted to highlight and donate to Trans Queer Pueblo, which is a racial and gender justice organization in Phoenix. Their work to abolish police and ICE comes from over 300 queer migrants and people of color. They're doing amazing work, so if you're enjoying the show, give them a follow at TQ Pueblo. P-U-E-B-L-O on Instagram and send some money their way. We chose to highlight them this week because this movie has a problematic representation, to say the least, of trans people. The effects of this movie actually had lasting cultural repercussions that the director worked to correct later in his career. We're going to talk all about that in the following section. This is a long episode, so let's dive right in. Let's get into it.
have the lamb step screaming Eric. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting worse and worse. Let's cut this. Please cut this. But I have a question. I won't cut it. Whatever it is, whatever you're going to say is in the podcast. Oh, would you fuck me? <laughs> Keep going. I would fuck me so hard. Curse. <laughs> so weird. This, this movie was like so surprising. All right. At every, like, at every step, it was surprising to me. I love and that. I thought I knew what the plot beats were. Mm-hmm. Shook. What did you, so before we get into it, what was your assumption of what the plot beats were? Well, first I have to do the plot, probably, huh? What if you do it and then you do the real plot? Okay. I thought that, I don't know, I thought that, I thought Hannibal would be in it more. Mm-hmm. I thought that the, um, the fava beans line was the last line. I do like that because when you said that, I was like, "This is like a sitcom." <laughs> We're at the end, like like Cl- Clarice and him are just sitting in the cell, being like, "Ah, oh, that was Buffalo Bill is a wild one, huh?" Yeah, he's like, "Yeah, he would go well with some fava beans and like a laugh track." <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Sounds like was shot in front of a live audience. I didn't know. I didn't know what Jodie Foster's voice sounded like, so mm-hmm. that was a very pleasant surprise. Um, I don't know. I I didn't I didn't expect. The movie to be about, like, I know you explicitly said it's about, like, a female experience, but about, like, objectification so much. Mm-hmm. I would say that's, like, the core of the movie. Yeah. Is the concept of objectification. I don't know. It was fucking wild. It was really good. I don't know how they, sh- like, made it. Every time I see something, I think that's just me having a, um, a not super developed opinion of horror, I guess. Because I'm, like, shook when something happens, like, back in the day. And I'm like, oh, my God, that was so good. Like, my bad. <laughs> but I, I felt that way watching a few movies before. I'm like, oh, shit, this was really good. Mm-hmm. But there was some stuff in this. I was like, how the fuck did they make this a movie? Like, what? Like, mm-hmm. it was just wild. So I don't know if it was a horror movie, though. And I'm all sure right. we'll talk about it. We will get into that after <sighs> we go to Jamie's. To my prison cell the recap um. <laughs> it's like he's like they told you about the rules about jamie's mind palace right <laughs> unlocking five different doors a lot of sound effects <laughs> <laughs> yeah you pass by the different jail cells and it's like you trying to recap like it's like you trying to do the theme songs oh, no. you do okay. Hannibal's voice all right um so the movie starts out with um jodie foster's character whose name is clary starling running an fbi um track like a like an obstacle course um out and wherever the fuck and then she comes inside and she goes up she opens up an elevator and all of the men are wearing red and they all stare at her and i'm like oh so that's the movie that's the movie you actually don't need to watch the rest of the movie that's the movie i'm like stop perceiving her wow everyone stop looking at her stop that's the man that's credit to the movie though to like set up it's like immediately at the beginning yeah, yeah immediately so she's like walking through she's like this tiny little woman um how tall is she I know you said she was short, and I, I made fun of you, but damn, she's short. Yeah, yeah. The reason why I thought of it, too, is because, like, in uh, Umbrella Academy, every time you see Ellen Page next to everyone, I know. it's like, where is she at? <laughs> like, the camera has to, like, plot a little bit Yeah, further. like, Luther and then her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, there's that really great scene with uh, Jodie Foster amongst all the other, like, police officers in whatever state, and they're just all looking at her, and she's just, Oh, like, awful. Five, yeah. 5'3". Five, yeah, she's 5'3", she's beautiful, she's tiny. Um, she's going to meet Jack Crawford and he is the head of behavioral sciences, Mm -hmm. FBI, and he wants her to go see Hannibal, Dr. Hannibal Lecter, who is being held in a psychiatric facility. He was a serial killer who ate people and a psychiatrist, the worst possible combination of person. Um... If you think there's a worst possible combination that's worse than that... (laughs) Let us know, but you're wrong! (laughs) Um, she has... A, um, like a West Virginian accent, like kind of a low voice. I was, I was like very surprised by her voice. I love her So this her is voice. the first appearance. This is the first this thing. This is the first thing I've ever seen Jodie right. Foster in. Yeah. yeah. At all. Mm-hmm. Um, and so basically she is walking. There's this really assholeish guy, um, named Frederick Chilton, who is the, um, the psychiatrist basically monitoring Hannibal. And he's a big douchebag and he's talking down to her, blah, blah, blah. And she's walking down the room, and then this man yells at her, I can smell your cunt, which is wild. Do you want to say that? On our podcast? Yeah. Yes! All right. We have the explicit tag. Sweet. I didn't say it first. In that case. It was just an insane, but I was like, your exact reaction just now was mine. I was like, you can't say that. <laughs> you can't smell. You can't 
yeah. So I forgot about that. Wild. So she's walking in. And basically, she has, like, a wild, bad first date with Hannibal because he's treating it like... We've all been there. He, he's just like, I don't think you've been there specifically no. when you're stuck with a creepy man somewhere and he is creeping you out and you, you have to try and do your work. Um, I worked in the service industry for a long time. This whole movie is just a case for why men should be, like, all euthanized. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, sign. No, All of them. I just agree. blight a blight on the earth. Just it's like, like either euthanize them or spend a bunch of tax dollar money to put them in like a, a really a secret... fancy a fancy prison cell yeah. where they can do their performance art murder on you. Yeah. Anyway, so she starts talking to him and he's like I don't know, she's she's doing really well handling him, but then she asks him to look at a behavioral profile. Which was just like a setup basically, because he offers to help her solve a, a murder case. There's, like, a serial killer named Buffalo Bill. What did they say? It's because he... Likes to skin his humps. I don't understand that still. Am I Me dumb? Me either. Okay. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, because, like, I guess buffaloes have humps. So yeah? you skin them. So you skin a buffalo's hump, so that therefore he's oh. Buffalo Bill. Okay. It's, like, not even funny. Like, that's cop humor for you. Yeah. Yeah. This, I was thinking back to, if you haven't listened to our Saw episode, go listen to it, where our guest Aaron said that their guilty pleasure is procedurals and like cops in the FBI. It's such a good, it's such I'm a good I'm feeling line. that though, yeah. because I like, oh my God, I wish these people like, were doing what they're doing. They're like, yeah, they're going to get the bad guy. And you're like, wait, no, fuck, fuck you're these like, people. You're like, are they? Yeah. Mm. So basically there's like also a crazy zoom in. Eric pointed out that men look directly into the camera in this movie and Clarice never does, mm. um, which I think is great. Anthony Hopkins Gotta love him. I don't know, man. You, you it was... to, you're contractually <laughs> obligated to love this He man. was fine. He was great. But yeah. he wasn't that good. I can do... It, it is mind-blowing re-watching it, being like... The movie does a really, really good job to, like, yeah. set up this guy. Like, they keep on putting him in, like, circumstances that really make it, like, feel like he's more than human. Yeah. But... It's it's just like feels like a parody at this point because it's been done so many times. It's just I guess I really haven't I haven't like seen it that much, so mm-hmm. it didn't feel like a parody to me. But it felt definitely like fuck this dude for real. Like shut up, dude. He's so annoying. Um, but he starts. <laughs> I have written down. Um, he has the face for cats, and by that I meant cats the musical because he keeps like flashing his eyes at her. Do you know what that means? You know what I mean? He keeps like making his eyes. Like, ah. Like, yeah. like giving her the old razzle dazzle he like hisses at her at one point he starts picking up her accent and he like does the thing the like psychoanalysis thing like oh you probably grew up in west virginia and your dad was poor and he like starts picking up her accent to make fun of her and i'm like fuck this guy which is what i loved because like Ugh. he was wrong completely yeah, he was wrong, wrong. <laughs> yeah she was just like well why don't you uh She's like, I am rubber, you are glue. What you say bounces <laughs> off me six to you. And he was like, no, nah, damn. <laughs> He's like, God damn, I guess you're right. And then she starts walking away, which is the point where Eric asked me, how do you feel about body fluids? And I was like, excuse me? And then a man threw his semen at her, got her in the face. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> I was going to say, ladies, am I right? But... <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> um, and then Hannibal's like, sorry, wait, come back over here. It was super rude of him. That was very rude. I didn't mean for that to happen. And then he gives her a clue. Mm. And then she's like, okay. And then she leaves. And then they find out that the guy who threw his cum at her uh, killed himself by swallowing his own tongue because Hannibal talked to him for a long time. And so Eric cool. said he's like... Oh, he's like a superhero who makes you, he's so powerful. And I was like, talking to that guy for longer than 20 minutes, I would also try to swallow my own tongue. No, what I was saying is that he's like those like internet people who are like, if you, if I, I was in an argument with you for five <laughs> minutes, you would want to kill yourself. And I'm like, yes, you're right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, correct. Um, I almost stopped taking notes already. All right. Oof. Get, okay. get ready for um, you to use your mind. Oh, I really love the shot of her. It was like a like a really far away a shot of her afterwards crying next to her car in the parking lot and then shooting di- like directly hard cut to her face while she's shooting a gun during a drill. Love mm-hmm. that shot. Um, that's the real Am I Right, ladies? Um, I also have written down in all caps, leave her alone. <laughs> um, and I stand by that. We meet fucking... Our bad guy. So there is a cute, nice girl singing along in her car. And I'm like, you're done. 
Um, and she sees a guy struggling to get a chair into a moving van or like his van. She offers to help him. She gets in the van and backs up with it in her hands. And then he just closes the door and hits her in the head and then rips open her shirt and looks at her back and is like, yes, delicious back. And then he drives away. Um, and we found out that that, um, what is her name? Who gets kidnapped? Christy? That sounds right. That feels right. Whatever. Um, the the girl who got kidnapped is the fourth girl to be kidnapped by presumably the same person. And her mom is a senator. So it's a really high profile case. Catherine. Catherine. Yes. We find out that he's kidnapping. He, as he said, great big fat, hor- great horrible fat people. Is that what he said? He said like great big fat people. Wild. <laughs> Um, she was like, <laughs> apparently that's a size 14 just so everyone at home can play along if this guy wasn't a bad enough already yeah um and yeah he literally checks her dress for what her dress size is and then he drives away he has um, a good eye i guess he's like are you 14 and then like uh, does with all stuff. that staring at woman yeah. can't clock a size because <laughs> <laughs> i also have written down this is a film of only leering only leering so clarice is being kind of Jack Crawford is kind of, he's like having her consult on this case, even though she's still in the academy. And um, they go to check out one of the bodies and they find out, it's like where Clarice grew up too. It's in West Virginia. She had a flashback on that same road. So it's like her hometown. Maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Whatever. They go to West Virginia and they're looking at the corpse and it has its, um, like her, her skin of her back has been taken and like weird diamond panels. And um, they find a moth in her mouth. Um, And it's a death's head moth. And those can only be found. She talks to some creepy bug PhD guys. Pardon the pun. That is a mouthful. (laughs) A a death head moth in the mouth. Death's head moth. In the mouth. In the mouth. (laughs) (laughs) Um, She, like, God, I love her. Mm -hmm. She's like... She's, like, up there with Ripley on, like, favorite protagonists, I think, so far. Like, absolutely. Absolutely. She, like... I don't know. She... She kicks all, like, like Erica's talking about the pff, fucking, Jack is like, okay, um, there's certain s- sex crime things that we can't talk about in front of a lady. And then they, like, pointedly look at her, and then the sheriff, like, gets away, and then he leaves her in this room with all these men just, like, leering at her. And she's miserable. Um, and I love how, like, she always gets, like, some word or some say in it. Like, it, it, make, it doesn't yeah. make it feel like she's, like, completely helpless in this world, because afterwards, Jack Crawford's, like... Oh, you know, I, I had really... to do it to him. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I had to do that. Like, that was just like, that was just, seemed like it like burned you up. And she was like, yeah, because you, like, they looked to you for like an example. And you like set the president. To, like, and he's like, oh, fair enough. No. Yeah. And I was like, shut up. Everyone shut up except her. <laughs> um, I think we'll get into it. Okay. So I stopped taking notes. This is when I was like, ooh. Um, she keeps meeting with Hannibal. He keeps talking with her. He's giving her little nuggets of information in exchange for her talking about her childhood. And I'm like, miserable. Um, and Buffalo Bill, we basically find out, is not um, is not trans, but is uh, like... Not even an action, like not a real trans person, but is unhappy with who he is. So he's like projecting onto trans people. And so essentially we find out that he is kidnapping women. He is skinning them and he, he's kidnapping overweight women. He's starving them. He's skinning them. And then he's making himself a skin suit. (laughs) Um, disgusting. Mm -hmm. It sucks. Um, and so what happened? Why does Hannibal move? Oh, um, Clarice is told to give him a fake offer. For a better care facility, like he could, like have a room with a view, basically, and get away from Doctor Chilton, who sucks ass and just like is mean to Hannibal all the time. I mean, I guess I would also be mean to Hannibal all the time, but also, don't do that. It's kind of like getting like two beta fish, and then you put like the little divider, and they just try to fight each other. I guess, but one has a gun. But it's also like a little bitch. The other one's wearing a muzzle, yeah, (laughs) Yeah. and it's not a little bitch. (laughs) (laughs) He doesn't not need a gun. Just no, he does not need a gun. Um, and so apparently that was a fake offer and, um, it's revealed to him that it's a fake offer by Chilton and he blows it. So then he, they they take Hannibal and this is where we get the infamous mask. I thought the mask would be a bigger deal too. It was not a big deal really. I feel like that's going to be like a history of like a lot of these movies is that there's always like yeah, little negative the thing and that it becomes iconic, but it's like not a big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they mask him basically and strap him to a, a pulley. What is it? 
Is that a thing? Gurney? No, it's, it's not a gurney. gurney. It's like a. It's like a dolly. A dolly. Yeah, yeah. they strap him to a person dolly, <laughs> and they wheel him out to meet the senator, and um, he tells them fake. He gives them an anagram for. Uh, he gives them a name, but then it ends up. Um, Clarice figures out it's an anagram for um, the chemical element of fool's gold, and I'm like, so obnoxious. He's like, ooh, I'm gonna really get him with this one. He's on the plane. He's like, what name can I come up yeah. with? He, like, like tips his fedora. <laughs> literally. Oh my god. And then he like starts. He like asks the senator if she breastfed her daughter, and then he like talks about her toughened nipples, and I'm like, I hate this dude. It's she- such an elaborate way. I love. I want, like, that's, the way he delivers information is, like, it's not, it's, it's funny, right? Where he's just, like, I'm going to, mo- mo- like, emotionally scar you and talk about it for a long it's time. like, troll, And they're, like, I can't deal with you anymore. And he's, like, wait, really quick, I have all the information right here. Ha! <laughs> he's so obnoxious, so he gives them the fake name, but he gives them the right physical description. Mm-hmm. And um, then he gets to go back in a better cell. So he is, like, in a basically in a monkey cage in the middle of a big room and he gets his drawings back. He's also drawing elaborately, whatever. And he's listening to fancy music and he gets better food. And, um, he has, he stole a pen earlier. He basically busts out, um, and kills two guards. He kills one of them by, well, first of all, he bites a guy's face. And that's when you get the, that scene is iconic when he's like wearing the white t-shirt and he has like blood all over his face. And he's like casually listening to his tunes, mm-hmm. um, bites the one guy in the face, beats the other guy to death and then takes the other guy and proceeds to murder. No. Yes. That's right. Yeah. There's yes. a lot of off screen that he does to these Oh two my boys. God. But it's really not, not bad. Not yeah. great. Oh my God. I forgot about the fucking, the storage unit. Oh, yeah. That's that doesn't really matter. There's a first clue. We missed it. It doesn't matter. It's fine. There's a storage unit with a head in it that had makeup on it. And she's like, it was a, a, a man's head. And mm-hmm. She's like, what happened to that? And then that's when they started talking about. Um, in the film, they say transvestites, which was the terminology at the time. Um, it felt weird to hear again. But we also got to hear about <laughs> men smelling cunts. So I think it's all, you know, <laughs> at this point, it's all fair game. <sighs> So, what happens now? So, oh, Clarice goes to visit him before he murders those guards. Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. And um, then he gets a story out of her about her childhood and how she her, she was orphaned and then she was growing up on her aunt and uncle's... She was at her aunt and uncle's ranch and then they were murdering lambs and the lambs were screaming. And then he's like, oh, you want the lambs to stop screaming? That's why you are a FBI agent or whatever. And she's like, yeah. And, and he's he like, says the iconic line. <laughs> waiting for him to say it he's like you're waiting for the lambs to stop screaming and i'm like say it just say the thing he's like the lambs you want them to be quiet (laughs) (laughs) and so and then he's like he's kind of like oh i'm not telling you anything and then they rush in and grab her but then she is able to grab the file that he looked at for her and then he like creepily strokes her finger with his finger whatever that was so weird later too because it zooms in on her hand and jack's hand Mm -hmm. anyway weird so then what happens she figures it out oh she figures it out he was talking earlier about how um about how this murderer is coveting things and those things are women and that is his like core trait is coveting things that he looks at frequently so she figures out that the first murder it was slightly different than the other ones he knew that person so then she goes to investigate she goes to the girl's hometown and then she figures out that he was that he, she figures out that he's making the skin suit. Um, and then she calls Jack and Jack is in this like giant fighter pilot plane and they're going and they're like, Oh, we already, yeah, we already figured out who he is. We're going to go get him. We have a whole SWAT team, whatever. And, um, then he's like, okay, good job. We wouldn't have got him without you. And she's like, okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Um, psych. They don't have the right house. They busted. They, they're a giant SWAT team. It got me so good. Bust into the wrong house, but it's like paralleled with Clarice going to follow up on a lead And then they bust open the door. No, what happens? Oh, there's a doorbell ringing. Okay. Mm. So there's shots back and forth. The girl is being held. We do see her. And there's that earlier um, with the line, it puts lotion on its skin or it gets the hose again. I knew that line. I thought it would be much creepy. It it was pretty creepy, but I thought it would be like a crazy voice. He puts the lotion. Like the Hannibal voice. He does have like a weird, he does have like like this really weird. I like that voice a lot. I thought it was really good. And I do like how like, he like starts losing it where there shows like 
it kind of shows how, like how kind of like tortured this character is. I guess yeah. if you want to give him credit because like she likes like begging him. She's like, I just want to see my mom, and he's like getting upset and he's trying to like dehumanize her as much as possible. Yeah, he's calling her it. Yeah, yeah. And so like it's almost like that scene. It's like you expect it to be one way, like very powerful and like ooh spooky way, but in the other way, it's like still powerful. But it's like yeah, that's what I mean. That's like exactly what I mean on and, it and surprising me because I like knew the the outline of the movie basically, but none of the details and the details ended up being like much more important in my mm-hmm. opinion. Um, but anyway, the moment of tension is that, um, the doorbell is ringing. He's getting upset because the girl in the pit, there's like, she's in a well, like in the house, in the basement, there's like a well in this basement of the foundations of the house. And she's in there. What'd and you call it? You called it like, it wasn't just like a hell well. No, that wasn't what you Hell said. well sounds better than what I said. So let's <laughs> say I said that. Um, but she, he is a dog, a little poodle, and she tricks the dog into coming into the well. Um, so she has the dog and is holding the dog ransom basically. And he's like, don't hurt my fucking dog. And she's like, I will kill this dog. And I was like, good for her. And Eric like cracked up. But I was shook. (laughs) Speaking of like things you didn't expect, I never would have thought in a million years that I would hear Jamie be like, yeah, I guess kill the dog. I mean, she's in a murder well. What is she going to do? That's what we call it. Yeah, yeah, she's in a hell well. Like, yeah, she came up with a plan. She's yeah. doing great. She was in there for like a long time. She's in there for like three days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she came up with her plan. She was like, I'm not going to be a skin suit. I'm going to hold this dog ransom. And it almost, it, well, it didn't work because he probably would have just shot her. Yeah. But you know what? I admire her. But at the same time, even then, like, like just like dying with the satisfaction knowing that you fucked up his plan is pretty. That's pretty good. For, for so you're the situation. Like, I'm not going to be, I would much rather get shot than whatever the fuck he was going to do. I think he, I think he just. He shot them? Right. Okay. Yeah. He wasn't, like, doing it when they were alive. Because they mentioned yeah, that, that right. early on that they got skinned afterwards. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Something For what that's <laughs> worth. I mean, they're not people, so he doesn't need them alive. Yeah. He doesn't need their people feelings. They're getting in the way of his skin suit. Yeah, um, just make a mess of it. Uh, so, the the reveal. I have been dancing around this good reveal for this whole time. Just so the, door- <laughs> the anticipation <laughs> building just like it was for Jamie. So, the doorbell is ringing and he's like, fuck. And you think it's the FBI. And then the FBI busts open the door and then it's not the right house. And then he opens the door and Clarice is there. She was the one ringing the doorbell. And she is in the den of the murder den. And it was like, oh, fuck. Because I like set it up like that's how it's going to be happening. She's still following a lead. It was great. Um, I don't think it was worth me and this recap building it up so much <laughs> but it was very good in the moment it this this that moment and then what preceded made me like fall in love with this podcast again why <laughs> because it's just like the moments that i enjoy when i watch a movie where it's like something that's become so mundane to you because like you know every beat you know this yeah. movie and so like when it happens like oh cool well, this is when that scene happens this is cool but like to be with somebody who's never seen it before for the first time and for it to work <laughs> for them so effectively like you just being blown away by it i was just like this is great this is the reason why it works yeah, yeah it's yeah. good yeah so she's in the house and she she busts her way into the house and into the murder basement basically and finds his creepy room of moths he's breeding disgusting um the moth symbolizes change womp womp and then she gets down into the hell well and she's like hello oops is that you and the girl's like get me the fuck out of here and she's like please stop yelling and she keeps yelling she's like shut up (laughs) and um then basically she is trying to hunt oh 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 no wait she comes into the house. She starts talking to him. He's going to get the card of someone for her to talk to. She, like, figures it out while he's talking to her. Yeah. She figures... She sees a moth. And so, okay, that's what There's, happens. like, saran wrap and, like, oh, yeah. glue and, like, <laughs> she's like, body parts. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no body parts. It's exactly. just another head in a jar. <laughs> there's no she's body like, parts. Is this maybe? But she sees the moth. She figures it out. She's like, hands off the FBI. Should have just shot him in the knee. I'll say it once. I've said it again. They don't need their knees to go to jail. <laughs> when they're keeping women in their basements and their murder holes. Okay? Right. That's yeah. when. That's when they don't need their knees to go to jail. So, he disappears. He grabs his gun. He's gone. Um... And then she makes her way down to the basement. She sees the girl. She's like, sorry, I gotta go. I'll be back. And the girl's like, oh no. And whatever. She's gone. And then she is in the dark. Ugh, this was the worst. She's in the dark and he's watching her with um, night vision goggles. How did he get them? I don't know. And he's just watching her fumble around in the dark trying to, ugh. And it's just framed in the goggles. And then you see him, oh, it's awful. You see him like reach out to touch her, like to touch her hair and touch her shoulder. He reaches back and then he pulls his gun up, but she hears him and then she starts shooting him and they, she gets him. She's, he's done. They shoot out a window so that it's bright. I didn't catch them shooting out the window. So I was like, wait, it was bright the whole time <laughs> because it hard cuts the night vision goggles only. 
Um, Which is like the funniest thing where he thinks he gets the power and he's just like walking around like, Teehee, you can't see me. And she's just like, oh no, where are you? I know, I was like, wait, so we had to rewind it, but he had the windows boarded up and then she shot through the window. Um, She shot him dead. He died. Mm -hmm. She did it. Um, You see the girl leaving with the dog and we decided we hope that she adopts that dog. Uh, Yeah, and loses the trauma. trauma. bonded, yeah. yeah. The trauma bonded. Then Clarice graduates. Um, She's at a graduation party and her and Jack in the same shot like they shake hands but it like zooms in and earlier Hannibal Hannibal the whole time he talks to Clarice is like antagonizing her like sexually he's disgusting Mm -hmm. he's just like and then she gets him too because he says something like oh do you think Jack Crawford is trying to fuck you and she's like oh that sounds like something that the guy who threw his his jizz on me would say and he's like "Mm, okay (laughs) and he's like oh shit I'm gonna talk myself Uh, to death (laughs) I'm like you're very rude sir like for someone who's like I don't like rude people I'm like you're rude I wouldn't I can't imagine seeing this guy being like this guy is the guy we're gonna build our our extended universe on right this guy because, they're, they're, okay, so there's, like, an element to this movie. I think he's so funny. Like, he's such a he's funny He's funny. Player. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me... Let, okay. yeah. She graduates. She's at a graduation party. Weirdly shakes Jack's hand, lingers on them. He leaves. I do wonder. What? Real quick. Because it does... It did feel <laughs> sexual. It did feel like... The handshake? Yeah. I know, it did. But at the same time, I'm wondering if it was supposed to be. We never see her, like, smile, really. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I... Because, like, I don't... I don't want to say that. Like, I don't, in my mind, I don't want it to be sexual because they, they did such a good job of establishing her not. Yeah. So it's like, but it does feel like, I guess it's maybe her being seen as like an equal at the very end. Because the entire maybe. time it's her like fighting against like this. I think the fact that it was the same shot should not be ignored though. Because mm-hmm. that felt like a very deliberate shot. But it could be showing that it's like an equal ground. Maybe. No, it's the finger touch. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, you're saying that's When he to... handed... It was the same shot. It was the exact same, like, framing of the hands. Mm-hmm. The framing of the hands is the... The <laughs> signs of the lips and the framing of the hands. <laughs> I sound crazy. Like, it was the hands! It was the same hands! But, like, yeah, when Hannibal hands her the thing and he does his creepy finger touch, it was the same handshake, like, well, the same shot. What do you think shot. about it? So, even though... I guess there aren't that many ways to shoot hands interacting. <laughs> But I no, no, so. I think there is. I think there is parallels because although I guess it was him acknowledging she is her, her she's combating kind of like the male world that is like leering at her. Yeah. She does have like Hannibal and Jack Crawford as these pseudo like kind of mentors. Yeah. Or like kind of people to guide her. And so you kind of see like I guess that you can see the parallels between these two men and then how they both perceive her. Because at at the end of the day, Hannibal is, you know, the bad is like the the equal respect that has been earned mm-hmm. turns sexual and predatory with him rubbing her hand versus with Jack Crawford. Who's I supposed think to be he was good. just doing it. Well, okay, let me. Let, okay, sorry. So no, it's okay. We're we're very very close to the end. She gets a call at the party, and he's like, "Hello, Clarice. Don't worry. This call is untraceable. I'm not going to kill you. The world's better with you in it." She's like, "Don't you like that?" And he's like. Goodbye, Clarice. I'm having an old friend for dinner. <laughs> Click! Classic. <Yes. laughs> Cue the, the laugh track. Mm. And then she's like, just saying, like, Dr. Lecter, Dr. Lecter, Dr. Lecter into the phone. She's like, oh, fuck. Because um, if you say his name three times, it's so funny. <laughs> you he's he's you like, the damn idea. it, you figured it out. <laughs> I feel like she's like fundamentally changed by him, too. Because she felt like earlier her, her friend was like, I feel like he's going to come after you. And she's like, no, he's not going to come after me. I feel like I understand him. So she's like fascinated with him. And he has tracked... Dr. Chilton, who's gone on the run to some exotic island and is following him. And then you just get a long panned out shot of him Mm -hmm. walking behind him in a very funny disguise. Like a blonde wig and a fedora. The fedora and like a linen suit. There's something, because that's like, that's like the exact same outfit in like the beginning, like of Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah. It's like the same, like... Hmm. Tommy Bahama. They only have one outfit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the end of the movie. Silence of the Lambs. Oh, he says, oh, will you, someday, I hope you hear the Silence of the Lambs, right? Isn't that what he said? Something like that. Said, does he? I'm he does. I'm, oh, okay, good. Yeah, he does say Silence of the Lambs. He says something like, I hope the lamb stops screaming at you or whatever. Yeah. He just, I feel like he never yeah. said the exact No, sentence. he just said the Silence of the Lambs, but. <laughs> that's what we needed. That's shut up, sheeple. Um, that is the movie. <laughs> shut up, sheeple. <laughs> um, it's I like... kind of. I kind of want to talk about what we think before we talk about the accolades. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I think this movie was really fucking good. Hell yeah. All right. It was. Do you yeah. like this movie? I like this movie a lot. So you said you've seen it on TV a bunch. Yeah. So the, the, I realized when we were watching the movie that like, I'm, I was worried. 
it made a lot more sense, honestly, because I saw it was like one of those movies I always play on TV, and yeah. so I always caught bits and pieces of it. I think I've seen it all the way through a few times. But like, there would be a lot of moments where they're like, you know, because it's on TV, so they go like, "Oh my god," and then there'd just be like the oh. next scene, and so like the whole him being it's like me reading the wiki. <laughs> that's it without any context yes though. so it's like oh, when no. he's disemboweled and like like hanging there in my yeah. research i saw i saw that shot and i was like i don't ever remember seeing that oh. or like the severed head i don't remember seeing yeah there's like a lot of bits i was like oh this movie's like comprehensive now so, oh shit uh but no i think like Thinking about the movie before I watched it, and it's been like a really long time since I've seen it, and like hearing about people talking about how it's like their comfort food and it's very fall. Yeah. It's like very true. There's something about this movie that's very like Mm -hmm. cold and like, but like, you know, jacket weather, I guess is the best. Holiday movie. Yeah. Yeah. Thanksgiving movie. Yeah. It's a, it's a good ass movie. I, so like, I think, I don't think I'll be able to say it better than when I said it earlier. Like the framework is much less important than the details. And the details were very good. Mm-hmm. But I do think Hannibal, I want to hear your thoughts on him because I do think he is hilarious. Oh. He's just like, God, he's such an asshole. He's not even likable. I don't think he's charismatic. He's just like, there's nothing about him that he's I'm like, oh, I'm intrigued. I'm like, such a dick. But that's what I'm wondering because like pre-internet era, era, that kind of guy is so like <laughs> mysterious. Like, you think? I- to like a certain degree, like they're not okay. they're not as like prominent and they're not as like memeified as as they are now, right? Because now we have like the fedora, le- well, well, actually, guys, because that's what he is. He he's is just a like well, actually, guy. He's like the guy who's like, yeah, I got really into like brewing my own kombucha and IPAs, and I can smell them a mile away. Oh no! Oh yeah, he like she walks in and he's like, oh, I can have the brand of your lotion, and then sometimes you wear this perfume, but you're not wearing it now. It's he's like, like the I, I can't hate smell with... your vagina, and I'm like, fuck <laughs> off! Ugh. It's the stuff I hate with, like, Sherlock, too. Every time Sherlock's like, That's oh, all I was thinking about. The mustard stain on your shirt, which means that you murdered your wife. And he's like, how did you know? <laughs> I always think about Sherlock when he talks about... He's like, you never see those marks on the phone of a sober man when someone's trying to plug in their phone. And my phone, I, I just can't <laughs> plug it in. I'm just like... Da, da, da. There's like, been a few times I'm like, how drunk would I have been with my keys? But it's just me just, like, chatting. Just doing a bad yeah, job. Yeah. Yes. I hate... Yeah, I hate the, like, hyper-intelligent genius fucking smartest guy and the hungriest guy yum yum he's yeah. people i hate him i hate him i there's nothing about him that i'm like compelled by i'm just like fuck and off and this movie like, puts him in an interesting situation because uh, i'm assuming in like red dragon and of course the handle tv show he kind of has like the upper hand but the thing i like about this movie a lot is that clarice like completely stumps him it's like it's, she kicks his ass she truly does and it's like is it She's just, like, super honest. He's, like, you're very frank. Like, yeah. and she is super honest with him and just, like, doesn't try to lie to him. She, do, I mean, she does once, but it works. She did. She she sold it. She, mm-hmm. But she, like, she's just forthcoming and smart and, like, calls him on his stuff. Does I have a bunch of sexual issues? He's so Freudian in that sense. <sighs> God. It feels like this is what it would be like if you had, like, a meeting with, like, Freud. He's like, so tell me about your mother. Oh, does he have some sexual issues? It's like, <laughs> you do, buddy. Yeah, you yeah. have those problems. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. I, I didn't... I the did... other thing that makes him such an internet guy in my mind is because like the second he's confronted by a woman, he's just like clunches up and doesn't know what to do with her. What do you mean, Hannibal? Yeah. Where he's just like, oh, it's sexual issues. He's like, no, I'm fine. And he's just like, ah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I just was like, it's not... So something that is very clear... Like, he's not, he's not, and I have, like, I mean, every, I think every woman has been spoken to in the way that he was speaking to her. Mm -hmm. Like, he's not talking about sex to talk about sex. He's talking about sex for power, to, like, assert power over you. Make her feel powerless, even though he is the one in a padded cell, like, behind a lock. Like, he's still trying to, like, reassert his dominance over her, like, as a man to a woman Mm -hmm. and like that's all that's the problem when i don't know i know i'm not i'm not saying anything new but like when people talk about cat calling it's not like getting a nice compliment it's like someone's trying to make you feel unsafe and like let you know that they could rape you basically and so you know i super can't and i just i'm like the whole movie (laughs) what i (laughs) wrote down i was just getting so mad i wrote down clarice nailed it because she was the one who solved all of this but like I think there are two themes of the movie. Okay. 
Okay, here's what I think the themes of the movie are. I think, and I'm really glad I didn't know, I didn't know that these would be the themes of the movie. I didn't know what the movie would be about. I didn't think the movie was going to really have like a moral heart. I thought it was going to be like a procedural. Mm. But Clarice is so like rock solid because I think her character could have been really overwrought really quickly. Just like, I'm a little Southern spitfire who's, you know, harassed by men, but I won't let them in. Like, you know, like the stereotype, just like, like both damsel in distress and also like, uh, I'm badass. Like she felt, she felt like such a real person, such a nice person. And like, I feel like a lot of the time we don't want our protagonist to be nice because that's boring, mm. but she wasn't boring. She was like, I, I don't think so. Maybe I'm boring, but she was just, <laughs> she was like incredibly complex and like, had a really good heart and was like good at her job and was still like, I don't know. She, she, she handled all those dudes, like all those dudes who had just been leering at her. She's like, thank you guys. I know you worked really hard. I know you're worried about her, but there's something we need to do to take care of her. So you need to leave and talking about the body in the room. Cause there were just a ton of guys being super noisy and annoying and literally eating donuts and drinking coffee. And she's like, hi, okay. Thank you all for your compassion and your hard work. Please leave. And they were all like, what? She's like, go on, get, like, get out of here. But she, yeah, she was, like, an incredible, she's, like, a powerhouse. Like, if if she hadn't, I don't know who could have been in that role and, like, done a good job. She, yeah. yeah. I don't know. If it, if it wasn't, like, her as, maybe not even as written, but just, like, that performance was, like, blew me out of the water. But I think the two themes of the movie are objectification and also wanting to, like, change, I guess. The concept of change as a person, but, like, wanting to be something that you are not Mm -hmm. or like transform into something else or like escape yourself. What do you think about that? I guess I can explain it more. Yeah. Once you pointed out that the, the men are looking directly in the camera, I like couldn't stop seeing it. And it's just like, the movie is so weirdly shot too. Not in a way, in a good way, but not in a way that I was expecting at all. Like the close ups on faces. Mm -hmm. Like I was a ton of those, like a ton of hard cuts to like chin to forehead basically. A lot more, more than I would prefer of Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> it just kept on getting closer and closer. Yeah, I was like, no. <laughs> but like the cuts of them back and forth and then like the cuts of people looking at her to her. Mm-hmm. Um, it felt like you said it was from her point of view. It felt like we were watching through her eyes for like a lot of the movie too. Mm-hmm. Like it was shot at her like eye level. Um, I wasn't expecting that at all. That's... So speaking of like just from her perspective, like I think that shines mostly through when they do flashbacks because yeah. I was like, oh, here's a flashback. They're not doing any sort of like grain filter or putting anything out there to make it seem like a flashback. Thank God. I hate it when movies do that. And like if they did it and I was like, okay, maybe it's going to be confusing. And then immediately it's like, no, this like somehow they did it where it makes complete sense. And like, yeah. when she's like going down the aisle to like see her dead dad, it's at like her aisle. Oh my God. I thought, I literally thought oh. it was her dad. Cause they went back to West Virginia. So I was like, did her dad fucking die? And no one invited her. And she just and like, we... <laughs> like showed up at her I dad's like, funeral. What? Yeah. I don't know. I got, well, see, that's what you're saying. It was easy. Yeah. I got confused. So, I, I guess, am dumb. Yeah. Never mind. So, <laughs> so maybe that was it. But, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I I think the theme is pretty... I think it's, like, the same thing that you just said, which is just, like, the... How, like, like women are viewed through a male lens. Like, how yeah. men... Like, it's just being, like, being a person and having, like, all these people looking at you. To the point of even to the extreme, which was is we can get into of, like, how they handled Buffalo Bill. Because his whole deal is, like, how he perceives women, how he, like, how he interprets that and, like, what's yeah. that. I think... I, it made me, like, very grateful for even as bad as things are now, like, for all of the Clarices who have done all the work <laughs> of, like, showing up. Um, to do your job so well while at the same... Like, oh, she my just God. Doesn't, like, she, and it's good because the movie doesn't, she like... She don't miss. <laughs> she doesn't miss, and the movie allows her to have moments, like, like by, when she's at the car, and then immediately cuts to her, like, firing the gun. Yes, yes. It's just, like, that. that is, like... A, like there you go. Like, that's what this character is mm-hmm. about. And then also, what, what you were bringing up at the beginning that I didn't even think about with, like, establishing the thesis. The movie literally opens up with her doing this, like, physical training work that, like, it's, like, insane for me to comprehend of how anybody can do that. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> to immediately, like, she's doing all this work to being cut, to being interrupted by a guy, to then go into an elevator, to be stared at a bunch of men. Yeah. And then, like, 
I don't the whole time as we're watching her walk through her place of work, like everyone is, all the men are staring at her. Like she's jogging with her friend and they're like quizzing each other on code back and forth and like stuff they need to know. And then like all the men turn around to look at their butts. It's like, I hate, I I hate you. (laughs) I hate all of you so much. And they keep changing the lens on different people. Cause like, even when she goes like to the, the nerdy bug guys, it's like, all right, here's the nerdy guys. And then like in a lesser movie, they'd be like, they're in the nice ones. But in like this movie, it's like, no, they are also the bad ones. creepy. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like, I guess I don't even know if I'll leave this in, but I I feel like I've kind of escaped, kind of escaped the female experience a little bit because like, I don't know, but I'm still like very tall and I'm also fat. So I'm able to like, that, that combination of things has made me like invisible socially, Mm -hmm. which is like something I've thought about a lot like in my own I actually did oh my god performance art hours so I did a show a solo show about um it was about like the concept of self-monitoring um and it used this this sounds so obnoxious it used the concept do do you know the panopticon is it's like a Michelle Foucault it's like a philosophical idea of making a prison that's in the round and then there's a watchtower with one guard and the the guard can see everyone at all times and eventually Mm -hmm. The prisoners will just self-monitor because they know that they're being watched all the time. Um, and that is being a woman. Mm. You're just watching yourself all the time. And there's like a Margaret Atwood quote talking about how you're your own voyeur because you're there's a man inside of every woman watching yourself like through a keyhole in your head all the time. And that experience feels very lived, but I feel like I've kind of been able to like jump out of it a little bit. And that has its own set of grappling, but I just feel like, like myself and my my body as it is i'm not like in i wouldn't be in clarissa's situation um because i can't be in the fbi for moral reasons and i also can't run a track so i wouldn't be able to run up a mountain but it feels like it just like reminded me i don't that that could still be happening but now i'm just like not paying attention to it it's just like not a factor in my life and i really think i'm actually like much better off than a lot of people Or, like, better off than I could be. There's some sense of loss there of, like, not being what you're told to be as a woman, which is, like, an object. But I kind of feel like I've I've kind of just yeeted myself over that (laughs) by (laughs) circumstance outside of my power. But I I don't feel the way that she feels. But I remember feeling the way that she feels. Mm -hmm. So it's like, fuck. It just sucks. Like, it sucks. And I'm lucky enough to work in a workplace that doesn't feel this way. But, like, I feel like this is just the reality of the situation for so many people Mm -hmm. sucks the end i don't know i just was thinking about that the whole time because like she's she's like not it feels like she's not safe anywhere except with her friend and she talks to her friend for like five minutes i'm like go back go back go back you know but like even in her place of work it feels like she's like getting called out i don't know Mm -hmm. she's like it, it, it seems like her teachers are harder on her than her male colleagues. D- did I make that up? No, that's definitely... Because there's a scene where she breaks into the door. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, great work, Dale. You did super good. Hey, you forgot your one corner. Your I know. Corners. I was like, he forgot the corner. Yeah. Okay, all right. I thought I was... I wasn't sure if I was, like, making that up. Because even when there's one where she's, like, a punching bag and these guys are just, like... You can tell they're, like, putting all their effort into it and really wailing on her. And she's still... Again, again, there's all these, like... Yeah. Parallel visual metaphoric symbols of her just being beat by yeah. these dudes on this punching bag and she's just still taking it. Yeah. And then immediately like called out of it by her coach who Sucks. did it very rudely. I know. But it's like she's a special consultant on yeah. an FBI case and he's like get the fuck out. Like <laughs> whatever. Ugh. It's just like it just it's like how how much better a woman has to be than a man to get any kind of recognition and then it still doesn't matter because they're still going to talk about fucking you to you. Mm-hmm. It's just like I don't know. Yeah. It felt... It would have felt heavy-handed if that wasn't the world. But this is the world, so it just felt realistic. But I was like, fuck, you know? The whole movie is very grounded. I also, I can understand why you would feel like this movie is really played out. Just because I'm sure it's, like, in the zeitgeist so much. It's like, hmm, how do I put it? I feel like Silence of the Lambs, what it is, doesn't get talked about enough. Like, what we're what we're just talking about right now. Yeah. I think it needs, like, a, what's it called when you... When you go back to something, you reevaluate it. Fresh idiot eyes. Fresh idiot eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? <laughs> There's another word for it, but that's better. Is that what you were looking for? But no, no, uh, I, I guess a reevaluation kind of thing. Yeah. Like, just like to like put it, like push it back into like the zeitgeist, push it back into the world and kind of like look at it again yeah. because of that. But like, I, I, but like when the movie is talked about, it is 
talked about. Like every sort of camera angle they use, all the shots, uh, okay. the acting, the lighting, the But like not without what it is though, I feel like. Like not, it, it, it talks about the sum of its parts, but not like, it's, it's talking about yeah. the parts, but not like the. It's like the technical aspect, I guess. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not talking about the themes because, well, I mean, guess who's talking about it? It's mostly male critics. <laughs> no. But... Um, what were you saying? Okay. So earlier you were talking about a podcast. Called Blank Check. Yeah. Uh, with Griffin and David. I forget their full names. Might have bad. That's uh, okay. One is a film critic. The other one's an actor, film aficionado. But um, Emily Vanderwerf uh, is, works at Vox, I believe, right now. It's like the editor-in-chief. And oh, she shit. is a trans woman. Yeah. And so they had her on the podcast. And so that's why I was To like, talk about this. To talk about Science of the Lambs. Okay. And they were like, that's fascinating you want to talk about this. Because she had recently... I think within like the last few years come out and started transition. Um, Got it. I'm really interested to see too, because I feel like we're not equipped to talk about it at all. Right. And so it's between this and then there's also a documentary on Netflix called Disclosure. Okay. Which is um, uh, uh, about, it's it interviews a bunch of trans people uh, talking about trans representation in media. Oh shit. Okay. All the way from like the beginning of like the very first movies yeah. to now. And so it goes through like the horror genre of how like, uh, dress to Kill and Psycho and all these movies usually depict yeah. like these people who dress up like women to like murder. Uh, what Emily had brought up on the podcast is that the one thing that kind of set this movie apart from those other ones, one, in the movie they explicitly say that he's, he is not yeah, transgender. He does not fit in that category. He's just a murderer. He's just a murderer who's trying to, who's confused and doesn't know what to do and yeah. is like taking it upon himself that this is his path. Um, but also at the same time gives him some sort of humanity whereas all these other people they're like crazy for the sake of crazy yeah uh this movie tries to be a little bit more grounded a little bit more realistic like that but even though this movie has those lines and that like does a little bit of work not all the work obviously but uh, at the end of the day what disclosure one of the people was talking about it is that when they first came out their friends only like sort of like foothold or like perspective they had on that is this movie fuck oh no that's what i was literally thinking the scene so there's a scene that's what eric was quoting earlier he wasn't just being a creep oh <laughs> thank you <laughs> they, they don't know they don't know he, he's there? looking in the he's looking in the mirror he's putting on makeup and he says uh, would you fuck me i'd fuck me i'd fuck me hard and he is wearing the scalp of one of the women and wearing their hair mm -hmm. and like dancing around and he's like a nipple ring and tattoos and he's like dancing it's like wild with the soundtrack, too. The soundtrack's really good. Yeah. I was, like, confused by it. And he... I like that song. Uh, yeah, it's a good song. But I, I was thinking the whole time, like, this is the future liberals want. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's what people think that... Yeah. Shitty people think that trans people are. And it's, like, it's with that nightmare. movie being in the zeitgeist in yeah. the 90s, like, with that being their only point of view, and that, like, such mm -hmm. little representation outside of that movie... It was like fucked and that like that hurt nightmare absolutely and so that's what they talked about and then also in the movie too after she fall i think jodie foster's when she says like oh he's not a transgendered person yeah but they said but then she like tacks on there at the end being like transgender people are passive like they're not violent people yeah to then of course group them together and be like other oh, passive people they don't do stuff like yeah they mentioned in the documentary and disclosure like you don't you didn't have to say that they just say that people you don't have to say that yeah i think the problem i think with any kind of profiling that you do is it's literally pro like it's literally profiling you yeah. know you have to like make it yeah i blame i blame ed gein all the way because it's just yeah. like that's what these people are pulling from I, I, I think i brought that up to you while we were watching it yeah of like even and this is what happened with jonathan i Denny. actually don't know a lot so he's a serial killer that dressed up he, yeah, he was, like, one, of, he's, like, America's first, like, serial killer. Okay. But he didn't, oh, no. or, I guess he wasn't even, like, a serial killer, though, because what happened was that he would steal bodies, like, dead bodies, dig yeah. them up, and then skin them, and then start to make, like, wear them as, like, women's clothes. Like, okay. women's flesh clothes. Ew. Uh, and I think he only ended up killing, like, one person, and then got caught right after that. Uh, so that was a huge deal. Not a very good serial killer. No, bad. <laughs> they, they, didn't get, they didn't get good until later on. Oh, Jesus. Uh, so that's like primarily what Buffalo Bill's Welcome to our off. true crime podcast. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> that would be a nightmare. Hey, you just want to like talk about our lives for a little bit and then eventually get into it without any factual basis? <laughs> Let's just read a script that uh, our intern wrote. And not pay them Ooh, off. spicy. Okay, anyway. Uh, but yeah, and then it's like, he's also based off like Ted Bundy with the whole couch thing. Yeah, fuck um, him, yeah. So, yeah, it's just, like, but it's, like, not being fully, like, I think when they wrote it, I think when they made the movie, and even, like, what I was just talking about right now with how, like, 
being like, oh, that's a really good, like, kind of villain serial killer because he's like how he views women and stuff like that. Like, I can see where they're like coming from it without being like, you know, with that awareness of like, oh, you're now going to put a character that's going to be interpreted as transgender. This is like J.K. Rowling's fever dream. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, this is what it is. And I don't know if it completely... Sucks. I, I'm not here to judge. I'm here just to state facts. Um, Jonathan Demme, after making this movie, came out and apologized and said that he didn't realize that the, the like how little representation there was for trans people. Oh, shit. And he felt really bad. And then he fully, like, he helped fund and make Philadelphia right afterwards. Yeah. Which was the first movie to address the AIDS crisis. Yeah. And brought, like, a lot of awareness to it. And I don't know how that movie's received, really, by, like... Yeah. The LGBTQ community, but, like, I know that it put it more into the mainstream, so it did benefit in some aspects. Could it have been better? Maybe. Could he have not Done put it? A, a I, yeah, I think it, yeah. this, it feels, I don't know if I'm right about this, but it feels like in the same way Halloween, they, like, took the structure of Halloween, and they're like, okay, slutty people get murdered, virgin girl lives, you know? And it's like, no, that wasn't the takeaway. That's what it feels like this was, too, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Everyone took away the wrong part of the movie. Yeah, and I think it's just and like the cultural character, awareness. too, yeah. It's like you say, you, you knew those lines. And it's like it's like with mm -hmm. Ring. It's like seven days. Everyone knows that. Yeah. And so even if you haven't seen Silent Lambs, you know there's a guy who dresses up like women. And so they're like, oh, that's transgender. Was Sucks. That, yeah. 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 I, I, that, I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting, but it like was not what happened. Mm -hmm. um, and I really appreciate that about it. Yeah. You were saying you really like, just like the movie. You said it felt modern. It did, yeah. I the way like the way that it was shot didn't feel like a movie in the nineties. Mm. I'm looking at you, saw, <laughs> you know, like it didn't feel dated. It yeah. did, I I know I knew it was old, like older, but cause, just because we know like culturally, but I think looking back, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel dated. To, and please, anybody, correct me on this because I would love to see more movies like this. But it feels so wholly its own. Like no yeah. other movie feels like this. Like all the movies yeah. I've seen, again, it has this like. Even jacket if it's weather, a procedural. it's in intimate because it's all these like close up shots with mm -hmm. them. It just like feels very personal. The but pacing's big. so good. It's yeah. two hours long, but the pacing is like fucking good. And I think I could yeah. be wrong, but I'm pretty sure like this is what helped like spawn what we now have is like because it was like this came out, and then there was like Twin Peaks at the, around the same time, oh. and then out, like right after that you get Ooh, X Files. This does feel like Twin Peaks. Yeah, I guess this feels yeah. like Twin Peaks. Wow. Yeah. There we go. Same aesthetic, same film. It's like film. Twin Peaks without the weird David Lynch Yeah. Stuff. So wait, I want to talk about why this is a horror movie. Okay. Why so the fuck is this a horror movie? I do I do categorize it as a horror movie still. Okay, why? Tell um, me. I think because what it, it... I think it could fit in multiple genres. Because yeah, it's a police procedural movie. But even then, like when the movie came out, those weren't like... What this was with like, like doing the serial killer stuff was okay. never really done at this level. And at the same time, too, it's like... It's almost like a reverse slasher movie, where, like, a slasher movie, you see a guy go around killing people, and it builds up to the end, like, the climactic moment. Mm -hmm. And this one, it's almost like switching perspectives over to somebody observing this serial killer, who's, like... Or this 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 slasher mm -hmm. character, where it's, like, she's, like, witnessing him taking down these girls. And so you're... you're it's still kind of hitting those same beats, but just taking a different perspective. I don't... It felt like... It felt like the same beats of, like, every crime show I've watched... But you're seeing that and through right. a retroactive lens. Yeah, that's Before true. Before all that stuff happened, there was this movie, which is like, okay. it, I mean, think about it. It's like a general audience, like what you were talking about, like in the 90s being blown away. Or what would you say? A caveman eating a hot... Oh, no, I said like if a, there's like a tweet about a medieval peasant eating a hot Cheeto and it killing them instantly, mm -hmm. that's how I would feel seeing this because movie. Because true crime is just realistic horror, right? It's just yeah. real horror. I guess you're right. Okay. It still kind of gets at the... Because you were having some of the same reactions I've seen you have with, like, other horror movies towards the That's end. That's true. Oh, the yelling is what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you're you talking about me yelling. <laughs> like, during the night vision goggles Yelling scene. at the screen. <laughs> it's so movie. embarrassing. I love it. I have to do it. It's a good... I, I like how you're an external viewer, because it helps me gauge, like, your reaction. Versus me going over, like, yeah. Yeah, you, like, it was amazing. I loved it. Yeah. Dead face. You're like, oh. <laughs> Instead of your, ah. Ah. Is that what you come here for? <laughs> yeah. You come here for the fresh idiot eyes and the yelling. It's beautiful. So yeah, I would, <laughs> I would put it in the category as horror. Okay, that's fair. 
Um, I understand. Although I, I see it. You like like you kind yeah. of. I see where you're coming from. With it. And then like of course when this movie came out, mm-hmm. everyone again it was the same thing with the witch. Immediately there to make it look like oh like this is a horror movie because they want to like appreciate it. I know. I don't want to do that. But it I just know you're felt, not doing that. Yeah. But that's what a lot of yeah. I see where you're going. Yeah. What? So tell me about how this was. Tell me about all the credentials now. So we haven't we haven't hit the. I love that. Did you think I would like this movie? I had no idea. I actually really hoped. Here you it is this again. <laughs> I had no idea, and I literally did not want to talk about me liking this movie. Oh no, mommy! Because... It's you. Here we go. Again. <laughs> <laughs> you're, just, <laughs> you're just like I don't want to ruin it. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty. Oh, and I've, no. I've learned. I've learned my lessons because just like yeah. being a male viewer watching this movie, I'm like, wow, like Jodie Foster is like such a powerful, cool, well developed ah. character. But I don't want to be like, oh, you'll love her because she's so powerful and she's. <laughs> you know, a woman. women, you yeah. like those. You're she... you're one of those. You'll like it. <laughs> uh, huh? You guys have so yeah, much well, in common. The miracle is that the movie didn't feel that way either. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like it didn't feel like, oh, here's this this wiry badass going to take on the FBI. And I think that like, has to be so much of Demi. Because I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure the book yeah. isn't doesn't do everything the movie does. And I, I believe guess it's, it. The screenwriter, too, I guess, knocked it out of the park, but just, like, everything about, like, between, like, the writing and how everything was shot just mm-hmm. gives her so much agency in, like, a world that's desperately trying not to give her agency. Yes. Yeah. It felt like the film was, like, pushing against that. Mm-hmm. Like, pushing against the constructs of, like, literally what was going on still. It was still giving us room to, like, breathe and, like, get to know her. Because that's how I felt a lot in the movies. Like, we don't get, we don't get time to know the characters. But I felt like we knew her, like, really fast. Mm-hmm. It was great. And it's like, it's going back to like Ripley of like, how long would this movie be if Ripley was in it? Like, imagine like Jodie Foster and like Midsummer. Like, she would get, oh, no. she, they would all be arrested yes. so fast. <laughs> She's like, um. Yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah, I don't want to simp too hard for the FBI. So this is all fictional. But it is nice to imagine a world where. Just goes back. I'm so glad we had Aaron on the podcast. One, I don't think because Aaron, they are hilarious. You, Aaron, but like, thank you for giving me that. <laughs> Just because it's like redefining the word guilty pleasure. Because guilty pleasure before was like, oh, I actually, I like the Spice Girls. It's like, shut up. Just embrace that. But like, yeah. me being like, actually, I like a movie that's about police officers. Yeah, I like procedurals. <laughs> <laughs> I love procedurals. It's, it, it's got the formula. They've refined it so much by the point in time we live it in right now. There's so many out there. Yeah. Um, it's crazy to see where, it, like, it's... To well, I feel like, when did NCIS come out? That's a good question. Let me look it up. In 2003. Okay. So, like, I think this launched all of the crime shows. Yeah. Yeah. Because there was, like, police shows before, but they were just, like... Yeah, but, like, the... Cr- yeah. yeah, not the Detective true shows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think okay. a lot of those were, like... Like, X-Files was definitely one of the originators, too. Yeah, that's right. But X-Files also feels like it takes a lot from Silence of Lambs and Twin Peaks in the same sense where it's kind of... Same energy. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't ever watched... um, I haven't seen any X-Files. I love X-Files. Ooh. Do you say it's not good, but you love it? Oh, so good. No. Oh, it's so good. I I love X-Files. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Because it was like... So, like, this with cryptids instead of... Yeah. Which I love Murderers. I like that better. And I miss... I miss that kind of, like, conspiracy theories where, like, Mueller is just, like... I, aliens are real. It's like, oh my god! Instead, instead of, of just like, like QAnon, Joe and, Biden yeah. eats baby brains. Um, this comes full circle because guess who's in Hannibal? Who I bet you have forgotten about Hannibal the TV show. Who? Scully. Scully's in it. Yeah, it's, she's she's Hannibal's psychiatrist. Oh my god! You're right. Yeah. So this movie was made for nineteen million dollars. Whoa. Made two hundred and seventy-two point seven million dollars. Whoa. This was a huge success. Yeah, no kidding. It did Game Busters. At the Oscars, it was nominated for seven awards and won five. The big five. Ooh. There's only been, there's been 43 movies in the lifetime of the Oscars that have been nominated for it. Only three have won five. Brad, I think the Oscars is kind of bullshit, but I love that for this. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I 100% agree. I hate award shows, but then like sometimes you get stuff like this. Sometimes La La Land gets canceled on screen. Did you watch that happen live? Yeah. Yeah, I was at work. Oh. I was like serving tables and then it was on and I was like, hey, hang on, hold on. <laughs> Wait it one was second. wonderful. It's amazing. So sometimes that happens. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it won Best win? Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Adapted Screenplay. Yes. Which again, while that like, I don't, it's that so weird. Great. It's so weird with Anthony Hopkins' performance because I have it ingrained in my head and then like watching it, it's just like, it's like a little bit cheesy, it's but it works. It's over the top, yeah. I liked. It. I mean, I liked it. It's I, just like, how do you portray that kind of character? I you... hated him. That's the thing, and I don't think I benefit from watching this after re- starting to rewatch Hannibal because because Matt Mickelson's Hannibal on and on the show is like completely different. He's like 
very weird and very poetic and very like stone faced and he has this like crazy ass accent and he like you get to see him cook. I don't know why I thought I'd see Hannibal cook in this movie, but I was like, where is he cooking? <laughs> Make me a sandwich. Get back in the kitchen, Hannibal, where you belong. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was just like, there's no, I didn't feel like he was, I felt like he was like a sleazy little fucking creep piss baby. I Which was like, get works. out of here. It's like more, it's like more realistic for I that know. type of person to exist. I know, but everyone's like, oh, he's like such a genius and he's so smart. And he's like making his noises at her. I'm like, I hate you. So I guess he did a good job and I hated him. Yeah, I don't know because Brian Cox's performance is very different from these two. So I yeah. guess it's like props to. Who do you the, think would win? Battle of the Hannibals. Ooh, no, I don't want to. That's Why just not? Pr- I feel like, like physically in a fight. Oh, physically not in a like fight. Not like acting wise. Oh, like, fucking Mads Mickelson. That guy gets stabbed so? so many times. Anthony Hopkins is a character who gets stabbed once. He's like, Why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> um But yeah, so I guess props to the writing of just like I think it's just like he's like just the premise of Hannibal is so unique and so like interesting. Yeah. And it really I, I spawns think... a lot of like creative ideas of how that person would exist. Yeah. I feel like it, it maybe um does it? It's been in the culture. When you said so unique, I was like, no, it's not. And I was like, oh, it's because it's in the zeitgeist. Mm. Like it's just ingrained in culture. Just having like, like a psychologist who's also like, yeah, a cannibal person. Like, yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, but that's like a very weird concept. Like you, when you're saying it, it's true. It's very weird, but yeah. it's still like in the culture. I'm like, oh no, that's a normal concept because of cannibal. Yeah. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> 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 and procedurals and all those others. It feels yeah. like we just like constantly try to find out like that new unique ed- because I guess that's like why there's like mm-hmm. there's like it's a cop with a monkey ape cop and like it's just like we've just like run out of things <laughs> and there's a lot of, I'll, I'll link some in the show notes if people want to read about um, the movie a little bit more uh, there's a great uh, article on the Criterion Collection by Amy Talbin that I didn't get actually time to fully read before this but everything I did read so far was very smart uh, you don't have to tell them that what you don't oh. have to tell them that you ever read that it. That is very, it's just very smart. I'm going to read it. I'll read it after this. Yeah. Uh, so there's... Oh my God, at the end, it like says a bunch of slurs. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, we love that. So, you know what? You can't delete your ratings. <laughs> well, now I'm going to delete that. So there's going to be no way to say. <laughs> no! You can't delete it. I, right. I, I have to. Oh, oh you can <laughs> Yeah. You do that, you've done that, you've done like a good segue out of a bad bit, but I'm like, I'm cutting that bit later, so what do I do with this? <laughs> it's just, all right, here we go. And, um, yeah, that was a really great point, Jamie. <laughs> oh, you're so stupid. <laughs> 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 that was a funny, that was a funny sentence, Jamie. Anyways. Uh, Eric. <laughs> It's Silence of the Lamb, male supporting cast ass over there. <laughs> Great point, Jamie. Ha ha ha. Here's my, here's, you can silence, you can silence the lambs, Jamie, but you can't silence your opinion about this movie. I was going to say, I'll silence the Eric. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just like your face and then there's like my little like CGI face on the butt, on the mouth. <laughs> Instead of the skull. Um, I am going to give this movie a two on scares. Okay, wow. Well, mm, yes, I'm going to give it a two on scares. It was, it was tense, but that's not scary. Mm -hmm. It wasn't horrifying. Even though the, a guy making a skin suit, that sounds very bad. You do see the skin suit. I was Mm -hmm. like, oh no, but it's not, yeah, it was, it was much better than, it was like, I don't know. I would recommend this movie to all scaredy cats. Yeah, because it doesn't linger. Mm-mm. It doesn't. It's not, it's not dreadful. It's just like you're just like kick his ass, Jody. That's how I felt. There you go. Yeah, that was it. And I'm sure a lot of people out there who don't like horror movies, there's probably a good chance you've seen some sort of like cop procedural show. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah, this that. movie is a good way to dip your toe in, so to speak, into the hell well <laughs> <laughs> of the genre. Dip your toe into the hell well. <laughs> um, I am gonna give it a five. Hell yeah, Jamie. I think it's a five on goodness. Everything, it fucking slaps. Everything is good. Everything is good. Nothing mm-hmm. was bad. Everything is good. It could have fucked up so many times. Um, except for some problematic representation. I don't really think it did fuck up. Mm-hmm. It was great. Right. I don't think we can gush about it this much without giving it five. This a five! Is, a five for the silence of the wow. lambs! I mean, <laughs> do your sound effects if the fireworks when you give things fives that you always do. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but you, you do the vocals for those. Could I get a sample again? Oh wow! wow. <laughs> oh, wow. It's a fire! Wow. Look at that! This is a rare occurrence where we haven't just been circling back to what we don't like about the movie. 
This was good. Mm-hmm. We didn't have to. Yeah. Thanks, movie. Thanks what date do you like about involved. the movie? I'm joking. Don't. <laughs> oh, we didn't even late. talk about what we don't like. Yeah. I mean, we kind of did. Yeah. I think we're okay. Any last, any last words, Eric? Give it Jamie, up. Jamie, does this <laughs> infuriate you? That I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, glad to watch a good movie. Everyone <laughs> go, what the fuck even is a fava bean, you know? <laughs> we're all the fava bean. What is a Chianti? What's Why? a liver? <laughs> <laughs> As always, thank you for listening, and if you're feeling up to it, drop us a review. Maybe give us five stars, just like Jamie gave this movie. Also, follow us on Instagram at Pod with 1D, or on Twitter at Pod with 2Ds for new episode announcements, news, artwork, and more. Your horoscope for the day is, don't judge somebody until you walk a mile in their skin.